Well, hey everybody, welcome to episode 10. Wow, 10. Episode 10 of the Handmade House TV series. I'm Noah Bradley and I'm in the corner again today. Okay, why am I in the corner again today? Uh, a couple episodes ago, I showed you the uh, an outside corner of a log cabin, and I'm, I'm still on the outside of the log cabin, but this is an inside corner of an outside of a log cabin. And the, but there's details here that I just thought that uh, would be would be uh, fundamental, perhaps for you, uh, expose you to a few more details uh, with regard to log cabins. So uh, one, of the, one of the things is that if you notice uh, this log and this log here, are, they're, both, uh, they're both chestnut. And I can tell that they're a chestnut uh, from a mile away uh, in that the, you probably noticed the, the poplar ones the other day, uh, that uh, they, were, they were smooth and strokeable. And whereas you can see there's a lot of uh, fine lines in this, uh, a lot of splinter potential. And it's not nearly as inviting as as putting your hand uh, stroking the log and everything else. That people, when they come here, they would be they're very tempted to touch the poplar, but when they see that chestnut, it looks a little too prickly for them, a little porcupineish. And chestnut, man, everybody just loves the, just the word of having a chestnut log cabin. Uh, chestnut was a very uh, popular uh, log to use uh, after the chestnut blight of the 1920s. Uh, with that basically wiped out the chestnut tree as we know today. Uh, chestnut was a was a well used wood back then, but I can't say that I saw I see a whole lot of vintage antique, really old log cabins made out of chestnut. Um, the earliest log cabins that I encounter are mostly pine or oak, uh, and it tend to be that uh, in the 1800s, mid 1800s, and on up that that chestnut became more of a popular. Uh, species as well as poplar and I think it's because the straighter trees of those other species were falling out and that the newer species were were the next uh, poplar one to have. Uh, chestnut tends to be a, a little uh, so it's in it's highly favored because of that it's it's rare you can't go out to the lumber yard and buy new chestnut there's none available anymore it's basically an, an, an extinct or near extinct species. Uh, and, and chestnut is, is beautiful when it's planed. It's uh, very similar in grain uh, to oak, but better. And uh, it, uh, people want that wormy chestnut, which means basically that uh, before it was sawn, uh, the bugs got in it and created a few tunnels here and there. And so it will come up with little speckles. But uh, nonetheless, chestnut is, uh, because of it being uh, uh, extinct, and because of it being durable and beautiful, uh, and it's got that name chestnut, um, that everybody really uh, savors it as the ultimate, um, ultimate cabin. And and you know one of the characteristics of chestnut was not only its beauty, but uh, it was it's a joy to work. Uh, it works wonderfully with a, with an axe, and. Um, and uh, but but it's also it's it was extremely durable and that people would use it on the outside for anything from barn siding to to logs to fence post or whatever else it didn't rot nearly as much uh, as in, as any other species I think the only thing that could really excel it is uh, it would be in our area be black locust or Osage orange um, and I've never seen a cabin made out of either of those but boy wouldn't a locust one be a tremendous tremendous cabin. So let me let me. But the the downsides to chestnut, there is there's all there's pros and cons to everything in this life, and so you have to weigh them. Is that for one thing, I don't think that a chestnut log is as pretty as as the other three kinds of logs: uh, pine, poplar, or oak. Uh, second thing is that that for whatever reason, chestnut logs tend to run a little bit smaller in size. Uh, than what the than what the uh, other species are. So there, there, and on this particular cabin, which is chestnut and poplar, the poplar logs are noticeably larger than the chestnut. And uh, uh, but but the the the, the, the biggest downside to chestnut is the fact that chestnut is one of those unusual species that when it does rot, it rots from the inside out instead of from the outside in. And I've actually encountered 
a, a log cabin that I was sent out to inspect that was made of chestnut and I went around it and I just started knocking on it and I could find out soon enough that everyone was a straw everyone was a canoe uh, every one of them was was hollow and that basically the whole cabin consisted of what you saw a half an inch deep to an inch deep and then just a rotted out core and then a face on the other side of it as well so if you're looking at a log cabin if you're looking at buying a, an old antique chestnut cabin you might really want to be aware of that or you can end up basically by the time you took it down and rebuilt it a, a pile of mulch so um, so be, be careful with that a couple things I really wanted to point out to you here uh, is that if you if you'll notice uh, here and here and here and here are our notches um, in, in here and this is uh, this is typical of probably um, maybe a third of the old uh, vintage log cabins that you will encounter and what it is is these are these are notches cut out so that the people could have put furring strips that would have run up and down on the log cabin regularly spaced so that they would act as nailers so that siding could be put up over top of it um, this in this particular cabin it's just in these few logs and they've toned down really well so that they're hardly noticeable but I've seen my share of log cabins that are absolutely ruined aesthetically uh, by these and matter of fact I would say that the vast majority of the time if I encounter a log cabin that has these notches on it I'll walk away uh, knowing that there's one out there that doesn't have them and doesn't have that scarring action of somebody else brutalizing the logs in order to uh, in order to properly cover them with siding um, so anyway we have we have we have the logs and we have the nice chinking did a, did a great job uh, and over here I wanted to point out a couple things about the stonework today um, this is a, a, a vintage stone chimney it is uh, it is old uh, we did come in and we had to patch a few of the stones when we restored the cabin um, and uh, we, we repointed it also all the mortar you see between this was not there they had used um, a mixture of clay and lime and basically over the years it had washed out to the point where you could literally see through the chimney and some of the and some of the cracks um, but anyway I just wanted to point out to you that that the horizontal pattern that continually goes and this chimney has stood for forever without any cement in it and it's because it was laid in horizontal patterns which are, are functional aesthetic and also they're natural if you go out in nature and you see a, a stone wall that is just created there that stone naturally occurs in strata, stratus layers and will stand as long as it's in layers so it's something that genetically DNA that we've been building forever thousands of years and also for thousands of years we've been seeing it in nature and so this is what your eye seeks to see is a horizontal layers going on uh, in order in order to feel comfortable that the that what you're looking at is secure I'm gonna step right around this chimney here now I wanted to point out to you uh, how, how the chimney how the chimney comes together and and uh, it's it's all about the corners if you have corners you're in great shape and so basically a chimney notice the stone comes over to here and it comes around the side so we have a we have a stone that's laying flat on the corner laying flat and it defines the corner of the chimney the one above it and the one below it doesn't go as far this away it stops here this one stops here but both of those extend down further than what this one does so they 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 tie in back this way and then they tie in this way tie back and forth and that's how the whole chimney goes from top to bottom is that the corners are created in order to bond it together in order to define the chimney and then basically what happens is you fill in between the corner and the house and you fill in between the two corners on the front of the chimney 
And that's, that's the secret behind building a chimney. It's all about the corners. Get the corners right. And so when it comes time to, to gather stone, if you're gathering stone in the woods, if you're, um, or, if you're, or if you're buying stone, it really pays, it really makes sense to, uh, to get as many corners as you can. Do your shopping, buy those corners. The corners are essential. And guard your corners. If you're starting laying stone, don't waste any of your corners over here. You know, keep your cornerstones, those with 90 degree angles on it, save them, protect them, guard them, keep them going up from here to here. And if you've got any that are really special, special corner ones, then set them aside and use them on your inside fireplace where you can appreciate them, enjoy them all year round. Okay, that's it for today's uh, Handmade House TV. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again. If, uh, if you need more inspiration, come to the Handmade House site. We've got over a thousand photographs with comments there. We, uh, there's uh, also, a, please join us on Facebook. It's an active, thriving community there. And if you want the best of the package, please consider joining the Handmade House Academy where I've got all this and much more. Uh, become a part of the inner circle and, uh, and help support Handmade House TV in the process. Thank you again for joining me and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.